Hey everybody, this is Dominic D'Angelo of WrestleZone.com. Today's date is September 9th, 2020, and I'm happy to have with me back again, Baron Black. Uh, everybody's familiar with him on AEW Dark and his time before on AEW Dynamite during uh, when the whole uh, global pandemic started taking place and uh, AEW had to make some adjustments in wrestling in Georgia. Um, Baron, thanks for joining me again today, man. It's it's awesome to speak with you again, and you have you have a little bit of news to share in regards to what we were kind of just talking about. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely great to be back here and talk to you again. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've been kind of busy. You know, I mean, been busy doing a lot of things, but I've been also busy doing you know other things that's not so pleasant. <laughs> so. I figured, like, you know what I mean, we might as well talk about this since we're talking about the only other stuff that you wanted to bring me back on for. So, um, yeah, we're in, like, a global pandemic right now, right? Exactly. You know what I mean? It's affecting everybody. It's affecting wrestling. It's affecting your job, your, your money making. It's affecting everybody. So, um, and it affected other people in different ways. And... And what I mean by that, some people actually got the COVID-19 and had to go through <laughs> one hell of an experience. I mean, you've seen NBA players go through it. You've seen, you know, people like, you know, stars like The Rock. I think it was some other well-known celebrities that also said they got it. I think Kanye was one of them. And, you know what I mean? You see all these people go through these things. And then some people are lucky and some people... Not so lucky. So it's been a very touchy topic for a while, for quite a few months. How long have you been in this now? Oh, God. It feels like forever, but uh, it really started taking place, I want to say mid-March, or like the... like. The tail begin like the second week of March or something is when like lockdown started happening and everything like that really started taking effect. Um, yeah, because I was in Philadelphia in February at the beginning of February, so and there was still probably a couple more weeks until stuff started getting really real. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I would say it's been so. What, what if what, that's March? This is we're in the beginning of September. What is that? Eight months at least? <laughs> something yeah, like that. Months. I mean, that's still a long time. It's been a while. <laughs> that's a long time to be in a global pandemic. You know, I mean, that's potentially deadly and causes a lot of harm to people and heartache to people and traumatize people. So that's a long time. Yes. But um, yeah. So during that course of time, um, I wanted to talk about today because I thought it was very vital for people to understand the magnitude of COVID nineteen. I was actually one of those people who unfortunately got COVID-19. Jeez. And, and um, I, didn't, I didn't talk about it at first because I didn't want anybody to be stressed out. You know what I mean? I mean, it was so... I kept it close to myself um, for, for a while, for, for uh, well, a few days. I don't want to say a while. For a few days, I kept it really to myself. Um just because I didn't want anybody to freak out, especially my immediate family. So I didn't even tell my mom. Oh, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> I didn't even tell my mom until like, uh, you know, like six, six days later, I told her. But uh, I, didn't, I didn't tell nobody because I was in absolute shock. I was um, one of those people who were ace, uh, you know, asymptomatic. And um, I had no clue where it came from. <laughs> so, um, so that's a uh, that's part of the situation. Also, that that will shock you. And uh, I had been taking every precaution there was. Sure. So, you know what I mean. And then that's the thing that also shocks people. It's like you take all the precautions that the CDC and you know the World Health Organization, and everything on the news tell you to take, and then you still end up <laughs> you still end up coming into contact with it and getting it. Right. So right. It was kind of. It's kind of weird, and that and that's the thing. What made me want to talk about it today is that there's still so much uncertainty about this virus that we still don't know. Because I'm not the only person that took every precaution. I'm talking about wearing masks, sanitizing, staying at home, not going anywhere, and they still kind of end up getting it. So yeah, you know, I, you know, I think The Rock also talked about his situation. 
situation where he was super strict on his thing and he's been locked down since the pandemic started and all it took was just one family friend. Mm-hmm. Just one family friend for just a little bit of time and then his whole family got it. So that's how contagious this stuff is. So I, I really don't know where it came from, but I did get it and um, I had some projects coming up and I actually needed to get COVID tested for my project that was coming up that I, uh, you know, I got stuff coming in the future that I can't talk about now, but soon uh, hopefully I can. And, um, and it came back positive and I was like, what the hell? That was, <laughs> I was like, that was a shocker. You know, I felt fine, but, um, there was, uh, you know, I got through a few days perfectly fine and normal and then, you know, I think around day six, I hit a wall, and when I tell you I hit a wall, when I've seen, you know, The Rock talk about his experience and seen other NBA players talk about their experience, and they talk about, it's rough, I'm telling you now, this shit is rough. Oh, man. <laughs> you, it, it, it's, it's crazy, and, and you feel fine for for a while, like I said, I was just a man, and, and it, one day, I just hit a wall, and it was the worst thing I have ever experienced in my life. Really? I don't know. It, it, it was just, uh, and I thought I was on the back end of it because I was already like six, seven days in since I got my test back. So ain't no telling when I actually got it, but from the test, it was seven days, six days from the test results. So I was like, okay, I'm going to tell when they say it takes 10 to 14 days. And I was like, it's going to be a breeze. And COVID showed me it was not going to be a breeze. Right. I, I had two rough days. It was pretty, pretty bad. It, it was, um, it, it, it was, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, symptom galore after not having symptoms for so long. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, it was really rough. And, and that's kind of like the only word you can describe it. It really kicks your ass to the point. You just, you just really just lay around for like, 24 hours. <laughs> you, you can't really eat anything. I, I still had my sense of taste and sense of smell, though. That's just kind of interesting. I never lost that. Oh, but didn't you? Okay. You really, yeah, you really can't do nothing. Fatigue, um, every other movement, it takes extra three times worth of breath than usual. It was, uh, it was a rough two days, man. I started wondering, like, man, it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? I could, I, I'm laughing out of nervousness right now, but uh, that caught my mind. I was like, oh my God, I hope, I, I hope this gets better. But it, it, for 48 hours, I was I was wondering, like, man, this is what a lot of people go through, and people go through this for weeks and end up in the hospital. So I was like, I know how y'all feel. Yeah. And, yeah, and after going through those two days, it was pretty rough. Um, uh, I made sure I followed everything I could. Luckily, my mom is in the medical field, so you know. After those, after that first rough day, I finally, you know, told her yeah. what was going on, and she just went real. You know, she just, you know, my mom. Uh, oh, for she, sure, yeah. She just went over. I was like, I'm, I'm good. I don't. I, I never went to the hospital. I never had to go to the hospital. It was never that bad. But it was to the point to where you're like. You know, it's kind of like you're a vegetable. Like you just, you just sit there and just wait for it to pass. Like, oh man! Try to eat. You just try to eat. You really can't eat. You lose your appetite. It's 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 like living hell. <laughs> it's like living hell. It's not fun at all. So, um, and then you know, it, 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 you know, after the the two rough days, it started clearing up, and then you know. I think it really, me really recovering very quickly, I think it's quickly for me. Uh, I don't know how quick everybody else has. I think it had a lot to do with my nutrition and my diet I had at the time, mm-hmm. uh, what I still have right now. Um, and this is a lot of people don't know this. It's another big reveal about Bear Black is that uh, I've been straight vegan ever since the beginning of 2020. Really? So, wow. yeah. <laughs>
So I really think being, you know, nutrition savvy and being, you know, nutritionally, you know, intelligent, I think that really helped me get through it quicker than, you know, most people. Or it didn't help me, you know, it didn't get me deteriorated, you know, like some people deteriorate their health and end up in the hospital. Right. It also helped I didn't have any underlying health conditions either. I was pretty much just a healthy person before that. But I've seen healthy people also get knocked down by this. Oh my gosh, yeah. In the Somebody we didn't mention too was oh. Renee Young. Like she was bedridden for I don't know how many yeah. days it was. But she was she was stuck in bed and like there was no there was no shaking it and like you know Moxley had to miss a couple of weeks of dynamite because of it just to be on the safe side and uh, it's it's a definitely um, it and like that's the thing that people don't think about is people wait uh, how old are you are you in, you're in your thirties right yeah yeah so yeah and like Renee's thirty five I'm thirty five um, and it's like a lot of people don't think about how much it can hit like a lot of people get yeah it can be asymptomatic for some people but geez it can hit anybody at any age and you can still feel those effects really really badly and it sounded like you really felt those effects so yeah yeah everybody yeah, it's, it's different it just affects everybody different like i said i had no symptoms when my pressure came back i was no symptoms for days after that attack, and then just one day it just said, "Okay, I'm gonna beat your ass." Yeah, <laughs> right. I was, like, I was like, "Whoa, what the hell going on?" I just woke up one day and I felt like shit. So I felt like if I got stood up, I was gonna hit. Oh <laughs> my it god! Was, it was pretty. It was pretty rough. I was like, "Oh man," but I, you know, I kept my composure. And yeah, Renee Young, I thought she was another one, and uh, and. You know, she talked about her experience too. Everybody's experience is just, you know, different. But I just wanted to put that out there to let people know this is this is real. It's not a facade. It's not fake. It's not something you want. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something you want to experience. Trust me. And um, ever since that happened, I'm, I did all my research on COVID. I paid attention to everything about it. Because we still don't know the long term effects of it. We really don't, you know and that's I mean? what's scary about it and, too. Yeah. And that's what well, that's what scares me. And uh, I've seen how some NBA players who are just as active as professional wrestlers. You know, I've been watching NBA. I don't know if you watch NBA that much. But, I've been keeping track of it. I haven't. I've only watched. Yeah. I think I watched the Sixers a little bit, and because they're my team, and then they were just shitty so <laughs> it was like damn it but i hear i mean i want to get into the games later on because I, I like watching the lakers and i like watching lebron and seeing how that stuff goes so i need to get back into it before before it's all said and done so um but you're right though i mean like those athletes too and you look at it too college athletes like the uh i think it was clemson yeah and but and then uh, there was some a couple i just heard my buddy texted me the other day there's a University in Pennsylvania here called California University, and a, a former Steeler, their son played for California University and got COVID and died. He passed away. So it's like, yeah. it, you know, you're, you're at your peak age and peak physical condition in your early 20s. So it's like, mm -hmm. it can come from anywhere and it can affect anybody in any different kind of manner. And it's like, we, we don't know those long term effects because people also talk about like, some inheriting heart issues already or certain things like that too that we got to be concerned about it's like there's yeah, a lot we don't I, know I yet read that. yeah i read that but after um after i recovered and i'll i'll put out you know i'll put out the information for people if they do have to end up you know encountering this because it seems like every holiday america just goes fuck wild yes <laughs> so, <laughs> i'll put this information out on you know what helped my recovery and stuff but yeah i got checked out afterwards and everything was really fine with me so that's good I got, I got i got scared but it's still nerve-wracking when you read stuff like that like people having lung damage and heart damage and you know that's kind of organs you kind of need to be a professional wrestler so yeah right <laughs> you know, that's important to reach stuff like that. that's so, important yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so it's um it's something I made sure I got checked out afterwards and everything was just completely fine. And the, and the funny thing about it, uh, you know, I keep reverting back to, you know, The Rock's video, but what he said uh, in his video was very, it hit me hard because I felt the same way. He said, um, I'm healthier and I'm stronger than ever before. And that 
what's the weird thing about it once I cleared the whole virus? Um, your condition is absolutely shit after it's over with. You have to build your conditioning back up. But once I built my conditioning back up, um, I feel better than ever before. Right. I feel healthier. I feel stronger than ever before. It's it's, it's the weird. It's like I feel more optimum prime shape now <laughs> than before. So and when he said that, I was like, wow. I thought I was being delusional, but I guess somebody else was the same way after they went through this. It's like. It seems like your body just, you know, turned on like Super Saiyan mode after going through, you know, something that could have been fatal. So it's like, uh, right. I really feel that way. It's, it's kind of amazing how to do it. It's almost, in a weird way, it's almost like a body cleansing almost, because you like shut your body down for those several days or whatever it may be, and then it, you hit the restart button, and then you got to like charge back up. But once you do, you start feeling a little bit better, I could imagine. Man. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, now, so, did you have, in the process, uh, how, we saw you wrestle on Dynamite, and then, uh, obviously, they transferred over to Daly's place and everything. What, uh, Ron, when in the, this timeline did this happen, and did you have to notify AEW at all about that, or were you kind of in that no man's land of, like, you're, you're in between the job, so to speak, of, of Dynamite, AEW? Um, it happened, so, Somewhat time around June. Okay. That's yeah. When it happened. Um, so I was yeah, I had just made my dynamite appearance. Um, I didn't know when I was going to return mm -hmm. yet. I had no clue. So um so when that happened, I was like, damn. I was like, I hope they don't call me back around. Right, yeah, you're like that would be pretty I'm sure they'd be understanding, but that would that would be a shitty timing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, you know, Knowing my luck in history, something like that will happen. But <laughs> you know, you know, you, you know, I just kept. I was like, let me get through this. You know, what I mean, I got through it. Then, you know, around the time when I was cleared, I got, you know, I got the, the call. It's like, you know, you know, you ready? You and you want to come back? So I was like, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> I feel, you know, I feel invigorated. But during that whole time, in that period from my dynamite. You know, my, you know, my dynamite appearance and my dark matches just recently, I was still, you know, planning like I was going to come, come back, you know, even right. though I did not really get the call yet. I was like, uh, you know, I think you had new, you know, new threads on. I had new threads yes, new, you did. You know, I, was <laughs> I was in, you know, better shape than before. So it was a, it was a real, you know, it was a real treat. It was real rewarding to have be able to come back to AEW after going through that. I could imagine, you know, man. Like well, it's a it's a good payoff, and it's like, and it really shows like the amount of determination and like dedication that uh, a talent needs to have to kind of succeed and, and keep going in the business because. Like, I'm sure you, you've you been familiar with even before the pandemic started. I'm sure you've had a lot of roadblocks and a lot of hiccups. That, and we talked about that in our last interview is, like, just the, the journey that you've been on. And, like, so this is something new to everybody, something that's very newsworthy to, to like, uh, something like uh, COVID and the pandemic and people are adjusting to it. And, like, for you to actually experience it firsthand and then recover from it, and then have the opportunity to get back into the spotlight on AEW and everything. It, I'm sure it had to be super satisfying and very rewarding, ultimately. So, yeah, it, yeah. it was definitely very rewarding. I could only imagine. Um, man, how, how did it feel to get back in the mix with everything with, at AEW? Did, did it feel like, and being at Daly's place too, not to mention a different environment? Oh, that's what I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Yeah, dark. I meant dark. Actually, sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I came back to Daily Place. It was a great situation. Um, you know, and and uh, what I did like about coming back to AEW is how serious they took their COVID protocols. Um, they have a great system in place. Uh, to come back home. You know what I mean? You you, you get tested. Um, everything is socially distanced. Mm -hmm. you, you have to wear a mask. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, they take care of everything that needs to be taken care of. So, you know, absolutely for me,
me for a guy that already got it and we really don't know what we get again. You know, that's a welcome thing to come through, come to, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you, you really don't. I can speak for everybody that, you know, business, you don't want that shit again. <laughs> you never again. No, and I can never. Any of us, we don't want that. We will never go. I never, ever want to go through that again. <laughs> I you know what I mean? You get tested, you get rapid tested, and everything, and it's uh, and they make sure they they make sure to keep the environment COVID free, everybody safe, social distance. That's what I love the most. I know, and like it's got to be reassuring too to be go there and just get tested and just be like, all right, I'm in the clear, I'm good to go, and. Uh, once that happens, too, I feel a lot of people, a lot of viewers, you and you'll read on social media because there's a lot of negativity and stuff like that, or, like, people will be questioning, like, oh, you know, you know, they're they're together in a crowd, you know, they, they have their face, some have face masks on, some don't, but ultimately, it's like, they got tested, they, they got cleared out to do that, um, and a lot of those precautions are being made that you don't see, like, just in front of the camera, like, it's, all that work's been done already, so... You know, for some people to get up in arms about some of it, I'm just like, all right, come on. Like, we're all trying to kind of get through this process and see how it goes and uh, taking it one day at a time. And, you know, as long as you're being safe and smart about it, and it sounds like AEW is doing that. So that's good to hear, man. Yeah, um, it's, it's just a lot of people just talking noise about stuff they really don't know. Right. You know what I mean? Um, you, you, you get tested before you even head to the building to the other place so testing takes place at a different location because you're not going to go you, you can't go to the venue before getting tested and then you have temperature checks once you get there and that's already after you pass the test so there's extra protocols and steps each way you know what I mean to the point where you actually get inside and everybody inside has already been tested already passed everything so it's like and we still have to wear masks yeah. yeah. Every precaution is taken <laughs> over there. So people have nothing to worry about about that. Right, right. So as far as uh, being on dark and everything, how has uh, you, how have you found yourself being back your development your development as yourself as a wrestler? And then who has stood out to you so far being on dark? Not it doesn't have to necessarily be in a match that you were in, but just like as an observer too. Is there anybody that stands out to you, and how do you feel have you developed too as a wrestler since the pandemic and since coming back? Um, I think I've, uh, I think I've developed into the next level of Ember Baron Black. Um, <laughs> you know, what I mean, I, I evolved, I stepped up the presentation game. You know, what I mean, I'm way more confident now. I think, you know. Every every breath I take, I now take it very seriously. Literally, <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm I'm ecstatic to be able to continue to do what I love and be able to continue. You know what I mean? I think it was a real that whole situation was a real you know second wake up call. Of like be grateful for everything that you get. So I'm definitely grateful to be back uh, doing dark. AEW again. Um, as far as people who stood out, um, hmm, there was there's a lot of them. Honestly, there's a lot. Um, there's a lot of talent that does stand out. Uh, omitting myself, and um, uh, when people get there, they really, really try to show you know what they're made of. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Especially the guys that's already been there. Through the pandemic, you know, like Sean Dean, like Lee Johnson, uh, Anna J. Yeah. Has been really impressive. I mean, her progression is just skyrocketing through the roof. It's amazing to see. You know what I mean? And then we had, you know, guys like Will Hobbs, you know, oh, he's show been, up lately. What a showcase he's now, had, too, yeah. Be yeah, and now he's doing his thing. It's, it's really almost been almost everybody. You know what I mean? I really can't pinpoint, like, that's. Person. Yeah. <laughs> That's just been the most impressive. It's like everybody's trying to be impressive, you know what I mean? Because they understand this is a big league, this is a big stage. You have to bring your A game. Yeah, no doubt about it. Everybody really been doing. 
I caught like a, a tale of the last part of Dark last night too before I went to bed. And yeah, it's just like that Ben Carter. It was Ben Carter and Ricky Starks I saw in the main event, and uh, it was like those guys can those guys go and it put on a really good main event. And like even looking at the card straight up and down, a lot of times it's like man, there's some good setup matches here that people should tune into, you know. And um, it's a good diverse set of talent, like and mixture of sizes and and styles and everything like that. So I thought I think Dark as a program has been pretty darn cool overall for opportunities for like younger talent to kind of showcase and, and get their get their name out there so to speak um yeah something too uh a big talking point we wanted to talk we talked about we texted about this a couple a couple months ago now but uh was diversity in wrestling and uh there was a lot that you you mentioned too that there's been some misconceptions i feel and uh that, that you wanted to convey, and that uh, I just yeah, just as an African American, talk about what uh, what you've seen and what some misconceptions have been, and then uh, yeah, just take it, uh, give your stance on this and, and your viewpoints on it. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a couple of months ago. Uh, I think it's really kind of settled down a little bit now. Mm-hmm. You don't hear hear it as much, but. Um, I think you don't hear this much now because people actually was able to see the end result of some seeds that were planted back then a couple of months ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think, you know, some people have egg on their face, you know, and some people, you know, kind of understood back then. But I think a lot of people was just looking at the glass, you know, uh, half empty instead of looking at the glass half full. Right. And I think I think that was kind of the situation where the whole diversity, you know, debate just blew up on social media, and Twitter, and everywhere. Uh, you know, specifically surrounded about African American wrestlers. You know what I mean? I think you know diversity now is is kind of bigger than probably has ever been in, in wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's, 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 uh, you can see every ethnic background. You know, it, it, you know. Any other, every other nationality on professional wrestling on the big stage, wherever you watch it, I mean, you see it everywhere now. So it's like, um, I think it, you know, some people just kind of put the cart before the horse. Right. Uh, you know, one of my chief, one of my great coaches used to tell me that don't put the cart before the horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people, some people would put the cart before the horse and really wasn't seeing things for what they actually were and wasn't taking it for face value and. Obviously, we see, you know, diversity is a, is a big thing of inclusion in almost every wrestling product now. And this diversity is definitely something strong and hammered home at AEW. So that's kind of really what I wanted to, to you know, to point out. But it, it, it kind of manifested itself over the last couple of months when people actually see it. Right. You know, see it more clearly now. Yeah, things seem to level out a little bit more. And how, how things go with social media is, like, people will latch on to something, and it'll fire up. And, like, you know, then it'll catch catch for weeks at a time or something like that, and then it'll kind of settle down. But, yeah, I feel in a lot of ways, too, like, their proof has been in the pudding in a lot of ways. Like, you, you see, like, plenty of talents, like, whether it's Big Swole or Will Hobbs, who we just talked about, Scorpio Sky... There's plenty of, like, stuff that you see going on where there is diversity. And I think it's just, like, people are very quick to want to go on the attack rather than be like, okay, let's wait and see and see how how things get going. I mean, there's certainly a balance where, you know, it's good to be outspoken and and speak certain things, but it's also good to kind of be patient, too, you know? (laughs) There's, like, a balance for it. (laughs) So Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not wrong to want to see representation because representation matters yeah. representation matters for everybody African American Asian Hispanic you know representation just matters because here in America we have representation of all different backgrounds so you know you want those people to see people like them on TV yeah that's natural everybody wants to see that you, you know what I mean but um, it, the thing is it's also you know let stuff manifest itself you yes. know what I'm saying let's see the progression let's see where things go let's not just be too quick to jump the gun you know what I mean so that's that was really the only thing and I think everything 
thing turned out great for, you know, people who was kind of they same back then. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's kind of crazy how stuff can change in just a matter of weeks. I know. <laughs> so, uh, I think everything is pretty, you know, played out pretty well. I and think so, I'm, too. I'm glad to see, I'm, I'm glad to see this type of diversity and this type of representation in pro wrestling as a whole. You know what I mean? And also as an AEW. Yeah, no, you, and you're right too. You see it, you see it across the board, like pretty much at this point, and uh, it is great to see, you know. And there's there's so much opportunity for it to grow and develop, and like it just, I think we're in a positive direction for it overall. So it's, I'm glad it's just like, you know, it's just kind of been a craze a little bit, and you know, wrestling fans they live week to week, episode to episode. So it's just like, <laughs> that's how that's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. So, uh, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I wanted to close it out with a couple gaming questions because you're a big video gamer, as we know. And uh, what are your thoughts? Okay, and I I keep tracks of you on Twitter with uh, some of your thoughts with uh, the PS5 coming out, <laughs> the PS5 coming out or not coming out, it seems, and then the Xbox too. Where Where is your stance on like the new systems here? What's What's your vibe on all this uh, when you took the lay of the land? I think uh, E3 was happening, and you were covering that a little bit on your Twitter. Uh, what, what's your stance on all this and your viewpoint as, as a pro gamer going on here? <laughs> okay. as, as, a, as a gamer in this game, for a very long time, okay, for a very long time. Yeah. I've seen through the bullshit. So, <laughs> it don't matter if you Team PlayStation, Team Xbox, Team Nintendo, whatever. I see through the bullshit. And my stance on these two new consoles coming out, you know, being the Xbox, uh, Xbox Series X, excuse me, I hate, I don't know why they named it that, but anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> Xbox Series X and then Play, PlayStation 5 is, uh, is, I take a stance on it that's not really popular, and that's why you always see me get attacked on Twitter by crazy <laughs> fanboys fan from all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think either one of them is worth a damn to buy this year. I really don't. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's always about the software and the games that you play. And to be honest with you, it just really ain't nothing for you to play on day one on either one of these machines. So why don't you just save your five, six hundred dollars? Because you're going to have to buy another controller. So you have to, you're going to have to buy a game. Then you might have to buy, you know, the online services. Save yourself the five hundred to six hundred and fifty dollars, and just wait. Yeah. <laughs> There's no point. You you're rushing to get a system, which you're going to wait to play games that you will actually want to play, which is probably going to be a year to two years from now. So it's like don't even do it. Like it's not even marvelous. I tell people every day on Twitter, both of them systems ain't worth a damn right now. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I'm not buying either one of them. It's not happening. Like, I'm not going to buy something to put it in my living room to look at the bitch to wait. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, if I want to buy something, it's going to put my living room for me to play. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't need these two systems to play the new Madden. I don't need it to play 2K. I don't need it to play the new Call of Duty that's going to come out this November. I don't need it to play Cyberpunk. I, I don't need it. <laughs> so that's the rest of my heart. I don't need it to play exactly the games that everybody wants to play on the games I don't want. Right. So there's no point. There's no point in picking it up no at this. Point. I'm usually like that too. It's like, you know what? I'll wait a year. Uh, they're still releasing games for the Xbox or you know what the PS4, so I'll be okay. You know, it'll be all right. Um, I know. I'm like, I was amped up because me and my buddies we play Halo like five a lot now. We've been picking up Halo Guardians uh -huh. again, and so hearing about Halo Infinite was like pretty cool. But then that got delayed. And so it's just like, all right, well, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump to get anything soon enough, you know, I'll just wait. So patience again, <laughs> it comes back again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had Halo Infinite lined up and then they delayed it. It's like, okay, now, now there's really no need <laughs> to get anything, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, if you was a Halo diehard fan, you sleep and read Halo and eat Halo, you know, I can give you a pass, but that ain't even going to be there now, so it's like, you know. Just, just, just wait. Just you wait. Just waste the money. You, you basically you buy you an expensive Christmas ornament. That's basically <laughs> what you're doing. It's, it's just going to sit there. And you're not going to play anything tangible on either one of these. Systems. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Then you'll start considering. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way, man. Now, so you, have you been playing the new Madden, too? Has, did you pick that up? Yeah, I picked up the new Madden, and, uh, yeah. What do you think of that? Because it's not getting the good reviews I've seen. <laughs> um, it's, uh, this is the situation here, and I'm going to rant about EA a little bit. Go for it. No, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Madden, uh, yeah, uh, EA and Madden, or something like that. You're right. I, I t- tweeted that hashtag a couple times because I was bummed too about hearing about it. So. It is. been together for too long and it's uh i don't know like i i was just talking to my brother today about it because he was a big madden guy he wasn't gonna he wasn't buying madden for different reasons because like he's having big life changes and stuff but I, I was like you know what i honestly might just go back i have my ps2 still here i'm gonna hook my ps2 up and i'm gonna play some nfl 2k5 i think for the season to like to satiate my football needs <laughs> i think that's what i'm gonna do so <laughs> Yeah. Last year was still a dude. It was a dude. You could 
can literally just, you know, hike the ball and just run the ball. Right. <laughs> so it, it was pretty bad last year. So <laughs> to, add, to add more bullshit on top of that, it's like, okay, you acting too much. You try to blow my blood pressure up too goddamn sky high. You try to give me a I can't, I can't do this every year. No. You know I mean, it's like, you got to give me a break. I can't be this frustrated. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, but I, I know for sure I'll be turning it on a couple of times. I'm going to be dancing. I'll watch the football. I'll watch my team and all this other stuff. And then I'm going to play and I'm going to get pissed off. And I'm going to rant on Twitter and I'm going to give you the clip. It, it's the same with never ending process. It's like insanity. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like you buy the same game every year expecting a different result. And you never get it. <laughs> you never get it. I tell you, when I was a kid too, there's not there was nothing more exciting too about it, like coming around to August and like every you're knowing, oh man, it's coming out, football season's just here. It's like all this shit's happening, and then like to kind of get that taken away from you and have like a, a like a just a notoriously bad game like get, getting trotted out this year. It's like, ah, oh, damn, what a kick in the nuts. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You had commercials, and you could be mad in the holiday. Kevin Hart was in the commercial. You had all this stuff going on, and there was no commercial this year. <laughs> there was no fans there. We didn't even get an official theme song on the damn game. This no, year. So you're right. Like, we didn't get none of that. I think they knew they put out some trash. I think they knew they put out some bullshit. Oh, so I. So it's like you know what I mean. It's like it was no fans there this year. It was no mad holiday, no mad season type. The game just came out, and then everybody got fucking surprised about what they actually was playing. Right? Sure. And I've been he- hearing, too, like, a lot of, like, gamers and stuff like that, they've been doing, like, these promotions where, like, it's been a lot more of, like, them, hey, uh, retweet this or share this, and we'll get you a free code. Like, I've, I've heard that there's been a lot more of that happening because of the game it isn't doing well, like, in the was bad reviews. So they're just kind of, a lot of ways, they're kind of, quote, unquote, giving out the game, and, like, a lot of the pro gamers and stuff like that have those codes and they've been sending them out so it's like that's kind of an indicator too that you got it might be time to kind of move on and find a little bit of competition for uh, ea sports here you know so we'll see how it goes absolutely man well cool thanks baron for the time i'm glad you're doing okay uh and like you got you weathered that storm and uh it's good to see you back in the aw fold here on dark and everything and i'm looking forward to seeing just you kind of flourish more and everything so awesome to speak with you today man yeah hopefully uh i'll be glad enough to get some more opportunities hopefully yeah (laughs) we can can get the you know get the emperor doing his thing right Heck, you, no, you're just just the tip of the iceberg here. <laughs> yeah, it's the tip of the iceberg. But, um, yeah, before we go, I do want to say this. Wrestling during the pandemic, you know, it's kind of hard for some of my fellow wrestlers out there, my peers, especially on the independent team. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But please take the COVID thing seriously. Wear your mask. Have your fans come in and wear a mask. If they come into the show, if you're having the indoor show, even on your outdoor show. I've seen outdoor shows have fans wear masks as well. Don't run any shows without fans wearing no masks. And I think I've seen that, and I was kind of really pissed when I've seen that. It's I, really yeah. not It's really not something I want to see, especially coming from a guy that actually went to him. So um, protect yourself, protect your talent, protect the fans. Everybody wants to get back to wrestling. We all do. We all. Everybody wants to go back to see football. Everybody wants to be back to NBA football. Everybody wants to be back to the NBA. We definitely want to be back to wrestling. But the quickest way we're going to do that, absolutely follow the guidelines that we need to follow. So we won't have any mistakes happen to unfortunate people. So if you're running the show, take the phone. Absolutely, man. Please. Well said, too, because... <laughs> It's so important. Like people want to get back to what we had, and you're not going to do that by just like kind of being half-assed with like, okay, I'll wear a mask here, but I won't wear a mask here. Just kind of just yeah, keeping the perspective of being conscientious of others. I think it's so important. So awesome. Well said. Hope and I'm glad you're doing okay, man. So anything that you want to plug, otherwise, too, feel free to let the folks know here. Nothing yet. Just stay tuned. You know, you can follow me. 
me at the emperor, that's T H E E M P B R U H on Twitter. I might got some slick slick announcements coming up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah. Cool. Well, all right, everybody. This is Dominic D'Angelo of WrestleZone.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Dominic D'Angelo, and you can follow WrestleZone on Twitter at WrestleZone.com. And then go to WrestleZone.com for all your wrestling news needs. And uh, follow the WrestleZone podcast feed. Just type in WrestleZone on your podcast feed of choice, and we should pop right up. You get this interview. You get plenty of other interviews that we've done, as well as our daily show that we do with Kevin Kellum and Robert D. Felice. So, Tune into all that, and uh, we'll chat it with you guys next time. Thanks for listening.